The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12302 in the name of Kevin Stewart on World Whisky Day 2015. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would be grateful for those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Kevin Stewart to open the debate. Seven minutes, Mr Stewart. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, World Whisky Day uh, was this past Saturday, uh, with events going uh, on across the globe. I first raised a motion uh, on World Whisky Day in 2012, when Aberdeen-based student Blair Bowman actually founded World Whisky Day. Uh, World Whisky Day is now being managed by Hot Rum Cow Publishing. Uh, last year, we've seen 40 uh, countries participate with uh, whisky-themed events involving 250,000 people going on. This year, we have seen over 178 events organised in 48 countries around the globe. There was an event for the first time ever in every continent, a World Whisky Day First. Events at sea, in distilleries, bars and homes, from Bali to Colombia and from South Korea to Nigeria. The most isolated event in the sub-Antarctic Tasmanian territory, Macquarie Island, which is a thousand miles southwest of Tasmania and 2,300 miles north of Antarctica, where the winter population of, is only 13, celebrated in style at their Maca Mash Tun event. In Scotland, around three hardy whisky fans sought to enjoy a tasting 2,000 feet up on Anach Moor. And Hague Club ambassador David Beckham took the US TV's Jimmy Kimmel live uh, to answer three ridiculous questions for World Whiskey Day. And I understand that his ugly selfie went viral. The World Whiskey Day hashtag was used almost 8,000 times on the day, resulting in an estimated reach of 11,305,000. 843 hits. And World Whiskey Day hashtag trended in New Orleans for 13 hours. Now, many folk in this parliament took to Twitter and to Facebook to, to promote World Whiskey Day. Um, the Cabinet Secretary, uh, Mr Lockhead, uh, took to Twitter to adver advertise Speyside uh, and the quality of whiskies uh, it, that it produces, uh, as did his... Uh, uh, Westminster parliamentary colleague Angus Robertson. Charities also got in in the act and were sometimes a bit cheeky. Uh, testicular cancer awareness charity Cajonas Scotland tweeted, enjoy the whisky but don't forget the rocks. Hashtag testicular cancer awareness, hashtag tartan checks. And other organisations used World Whiskey Day to promote their whisky heritage, with the Provost of Aberdeenshire launching a brochure uh, on the translations of secret malts of Aberdeenshire. 2015, presiding officer, is of course Scotland's year of food and drink, a Scottish Government initiative led by Events Scotland, Visit Scotland, and uh, May is of course Whiskey Month. Malcolm Roughhead, Visit Scotland Chief Executive, said whisky is one of Scotland's most valuable commodities, with visitors from across the globe coming to our shores to experience an authentic Scottish dram. World Whisky Day is a fantastic initiative and a chance for novices and enthusiasts everywhere to raise a glass to Scotland's national drink. Widening the appeal of whisky is important if we want to encourage more visitors to come to Scotland, particularly during the year of Food and Drink 2015. And events are a key part of that, and I hope that this year's Whisky Month celebrations, of which World Whisky Day is a key part, inspires Scots and visitors to Scotland to come and discover more about one of our most famous exports. Catherine Much of Scotland Food and Drink said that uh, the, the organisation was delighted to have supported World Whiskey Day since its inception. And it is fantastic that it is continuing to grow year on year. Scotland is blessed with a world-class natural larder and World Whiskey Day provides the perfect platform to showcase our land of food and drink throughout the world. With 2015 being Scotland's year of food and drink and May being Whiskey Month, what better way to celebrate than with a dram? You can see there's a theme developing here. Uh, officer. 
Founder of World Whiskey Day, Blair Bowman, said the day just gets keep, keeps getting bigger and bigger and better. To see it grow from a simple idea to something which is spread across all seven continents and is bring, bringing together thousands of people to celebrate whiskey is such a thrill. We're going to have to work hard to top this next year. Now space is the final frontier for World Whiskey Day. Although in terms of space drama, uh, advocacy of whiskey by Scotty from Star Trek, Star Trek could be said to have uh, uh, already gone where no dram has gone before. The First Minister herself also took to Twitter uh, and said that it's great to see an iconic Scottish product bringing so many people around the world together. It seems that World Whiskey Day brightened up the lives of many. And for those that may be feeling a little bit down after all of the amazing events, let me cheer you up by reminding you of the old proverb, today's rain is tomorrow's whiskey. Slancheva, presiding officer. Thank you very much. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of around four minutes, please. And I call David Torrens to be followed by Sarah Boyack. Thank you, presiding officer. And presiding officer, could I give my apologies not for not being able to stay for the whole of the debate as I have another engagement. I want to thank Kevin Stewart for bringing this motion to Parliament and to extend my congratulations to all those who have contributed to making World Whiskey Day 2015 a success. I also welcome the opportunity to speak about whiskey today. Not only is whiskey our national drink, but it is also a significant driver of Scotland's economy. With regards to both of these aspects, World Whiskey Day represents a great opportunity. It allows Scotland, as well as whiskey lovers all over the world, to celebrate whiskey by promoting the product on a global scale. This year, more than 170 events in celebration of World Whiskey Day were registered in many different countries. It shows that rather than being exclusive, whiskey is a drink to be shared among friends. In the spirit, I believe that whiskey reflects the welcoming nature and hospitality as Scots are renowned for. Without any doubt, whisky is one of the country's most ionic industries. The stone has a long history in our country, which also favoured the development of many different regional characteristics. If I dare to say, back in the days, whisky was also a sign of Scotland's sometimes rebellious character. What characterises our whisky industry today is much of the tradition has been preserved. It is, of course, true that many distilleries are owned by bigger companies. Nonetheless, Scottish whisky is renowned for its diversity in taste and flavour due to the fact that ingredients are sourced from different locations. World Whiskey Day allows us to celebrate all types of whisky, whether it is a Highland, Lowland, Speyside, Campbelltown or Isley whisky. Not to forget there are blended whisky and blended malt whiskies. The art of blended whisky is still very much a traditional practice and carefully passed on from one generation to another. One of my constituents in Kirkcaldy, Ian Norville, has followed the family tradition and continues to blend his own whisky, Norval Sensible. Another issue I want to mention today, and what I am particularly delighted about, is the way that the whisky industry combines its historic roots with the newest technologies. This not only leads to high quality, but also contributes towards a more sustainable product. In 2009, the Scottish Whisky Association published its first environmental strategy. The strategy sets out very specific targets to increase the use of non-fossil fuels and reduce green, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Overall, the aim is to make industry more energy efficient. The Scottish Whisky Association will publish a performance report later this year, and I am looking forward to hearing about achievements, and I believe that other industries can learn from the lessons in moving towards environmentally friendly practices. I have already mentioned the economic weight of whisky industry. 90% of whisky is exported to more than 200 countries. Plus whisky, Exports contribute $3.95 billion to our economy, especially the last decade has seen a surge in exports, accounting for an increase of 74%. Despite exports declining in 2014, the whisky export market is still expanding, with merging markets gaining greater interest. Industry is challenged to constantly evolve while maintaining its good reputation. However, I am confident that companies are well equipped to face these hurdles and sales will continue to grow. Today, many distilleries welcome visitors to observe and learn more about how whisky is produced. Whisky tourism is an additional economic benefit and strengthens Scotland's tourist sector as a whole. 
It also allows producers to display their rich histories of our tasting sessions while attracting new customers. Talking about whisky, we should not forget that industry also supports over 40,000 jobs in the UK. Their hard work, dedication and de determination to achieve high quality has been integral to a success story of whisky. Thus, I do want to take this opportunity to, f to thank all involved, as well as wish them all the best for future endeavours. President Officer, I think that this year's World Whisky Day has fulfilled all expectations in celebrating our national drink. It offered many distilleries a chance to promote their products abroad and remind us to cherish its long-standing tradition and economic importance. In closing, I am positive that the Scotch whisky will continue to thrive here in Scotland and around the world. We might call it the water of life. However, I also want to remind each and every one to enjoy whisky responsibly. Thank you very much. And I now call Sarah Boyack to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Thank you very much. Um, I think this is a really appropriate debate and I do want to thank Kevin Stewart for bringing it to the Chamber today because it enables us to celebrate one of Scotland's greatest products. It enables us to focus on our economy, our tourism industry, but crucially our culture. I first heard firsthand about this debate on Facebook. Um, I've repeatedly been invited to World Whiskey Day over the last couple of years. Um, and I think it's, it's a really good example of the point that Kevin Stewart made about the huge impact that World Whiskey Day has had on Facebook. I wonder, and, and on social media generally, and I wonder whether that's because it was started by Blair Bowman, who started the initiative while he was studying at university. And I think access to the media to students today is totally different to those of us who studied some time ago. I think the number of people um, now celebrating the initiative is fantastic. The global reach of over 50 million people on social media is just incredible for our industry. And it's something that is absolutely worth celebrating. And I think it's about making whiskey inclusive and enjoyable and trying to move away from whisky only being something that a few people will drink and something that's a bit more exclusive or a niche. Um, although I didn't attend, I understand that the Angel Share in Edinburgh had a fantastic, uh, I see at least one of my colleagues is nodding, I had a fantastic uh, celebration on Saturday. For us in Edinburgh, whisky is hugely important as part of our economy and part of our tourism offer. The North British Distillery Company, which is based in Gorgie in Edinburgh, was founded 130 years ago. When it was founded in Wheatfield, it was actually on the edge of the city. It was a pig farm at the time, and it's just a statement of how Edinburgh has grown that it's now part of the inner city. The site at the time was perfectly suited for the business. It was beside the Union Canal, so there was water access. It was close to the railway for distribution and it was close to what was then the main sewer of the city for disposal of effluent. And neighbouring dairy farmers provided a ready outlet for the disposal of draft and dreg residue. Now, those of us who were here last week in the chamber will know that is a perfect example of the early circular economy in Scotland. Um, it's a hugely important business in the area. It's changed over time. It's been developed. I think one of the things that's striking about the industry is that in its first 108 years, it was a cooperative arrangement. The distillery financed by the trade so that distillers could get spirit that was consistently of high quality at a price they could control and that was then used in the whisky industry. It's still one of the largest Scots grain whisky producers in Scotland, and although the distillery doesn't market its own brand, the whisky spirit it produces is used in a number of popular well-known brands such as Famous Grouse, Johnny Walker Black Label and Cutty Sark. So it's great for us in Edinburgh to be able to celebrate because we still have whisky being produced in the city. But I think, as has already been said, in this year of Scottish food and drink, it's important that we celebrate the role of whisky in our tourism industry as well. And although we don't have a branded whisky in Edinburgh ourselves, we do benefit from the cultural associations with our national drink. The city is home to two of the three members' rooms of the Scotch Malt Whisky Society, one in Leith, one in the city and one in London. But the city is also home of the Scottish Whisky Experience Tour and it takes visitors through a replica distillery to learn how Scotland's national drink is made. Personally, I will always remember World Whisky Day. 
it's always going to be memorable to me because it's my birthday. So it's something I'm always going to celebrate personally. I'm glad Kevin Stewart asked us to um, widen the appeal of whisky. And I think it was also appropriate that it was suggested that we should drink whisky, um, not just in moderation, but sensibly. And if I can add my suggestion as to how we widen the appeal of whisky, my personal preference, I don't drink it straight, is to add it to um, Cranachan, one of my favourite puddings. And uh, those of you who are pudding aficionados will know that whisky can be added to many, many Scottish puddings. So it's one of the ways we can um, expand the attraction and the appeal of, of whisky. And I think in the year of Scottish food and drink, we should be thinking um, laterally about how we promote whisky, all the different brands of whisky we have in Scotland, but how we drink it differently as well. So I want to add my words of congratulations to those who initiated World Whisky Day, um, celebrate the fact that there are so many jobs in Scotland associated with whisky and celebrate the fact that it's five billion pounds worth to our economy every year 3.3 billion pounds directly and 1.8 billion invested across our domestic supply chain it's hugely important it accounts for it's quite a staggering figure a quarter of the uk's food and drink exports alone so it's something we should celebrate it's part of our culture it's part of our tourism offer it's part of our economy it's part of who we are but let's just make sure we celebrate it and we do it responsibly and we enjoy it. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Many thanks. I now call Mary Scanlon to be followed by Liam McCarthy. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I say that I have had whisky poured over a haggis at Burns Supper, but never tried it in pudding, but there you are. Um, I would also like to congratulate Kevin Stewart. We don't often agree in this chamber, but uh, wholeheartedly agree and commend him on agree and uh, commend him on securing this debate. To acknowledge the Fourth World Whisky Day uh, uh, and allow people in the globe to raise a glass to this incredible uh, Scottish product. I would also like to acknowledge the points that David Torrance made, particularly on their environmental credentials. It may be an old industry, but they're very modern in terms of addressing uh, the environment, uh, the exports, as Sarah Boyack said, and the visitor experience in the Highlands is highly professional, professional and absolutely second to none. Uh, I am the co-convener of the cross-party group on whisky with uh, Gordon MacDonald. And, uh, it's, and also as an MSP for the Highlands and Islands, uh, whisky's uh, never far from my radar. Whether it's in Murray, as the Cabinet Secretary will know, as a constituency with the most distilleries in Scotland, uh, and the famous malt whisky trail, uh, the islands, uh, particularly fond of Isla, with whiskies from Laphroaig, Glagabulin, De Bruch, Laddie and Bunahaben, and uh, uh, Orkney with Highland Park uh, and the rest of the region, which hosts countless maltings, distilleries and also the farms that supply some of the finest grain to provide that special Scotch flavour. But the one thing about whisky is it's all whiskies in Scotland are very similar, but they're all very totally different. And every time you visit a distillery, the stills are a different shape. There are different techniques in every single distillery and uh, all credit to them. Uh, but that's why the success of the whisky industry is not just for the Highlands, but also across Scotland. Uh, and I know that the Scotch Whisky Association uh, were certainly uh, very welcoming of the 2% reduction in duty announced by uh, George Osborne earlier this year. Uh, but I want to focus my remarks on some of the new distilleries which have opened or are planned, many of which are small craft distilleries, which won't produce mass volumes, at least initially, but will provide a different style of whisky for a niche market. And the next cross-party group are doing a tasting of the new craft whiskies, uh, craft distilleries, uh, and I would hope that some of my colleagues here today would come along. But the growth in new distilleries is phenomenal. Uh, two billion of investment last year and proposed for this year, the biggest growth in the industry since the 1970s. And examples of new distilleries, we've got one in Shetland at Saxaford on the uh, Isle of Unst, the islands of, uh, uh, in the Isle of Unst. We've also got a whisky company in Benbecula, a new distillery in Tarbert and Harris, the Adelphi distillery in Ardnamurchan. And although maybe you would sit here in Edinburgh and say, well, there's only 15 people working there, 
15 people in a remote and rural area and 15 families that have security of employment and income for a long time. Uh, and also, of course, Ballandalich. And along with Highland colleagues, and I would presume Mr Lockhead as well, I will be attending the opening of Dalmanach uh, Distillery at Carron near Aberlauer uh, next month. So another new one. But all of these examples and many more that are venturing into the craft distillery side have seen the potential for their product, but they've also been able to overcome what could be a daunting challenge. A large amount of capital is required to build a new distillery, and it takes a minimum of three years for the product to mature, so return on investment can sometimes be years after the initial outlay. And that's why support from the Scottish Government and High, etc., is so uh, important. So we have a great deal to be proud of. I, I'm looking at the time and moving on. But there's just one thing I did want to say today, and the Scottish Whisky Association often remind, uh, remind us at the cross-party groups. What does protect Scotch whisky being made in Scotland is an Act of Parliament which was passed at Westminster. So you cannot produce Scotch in Japan or Australia or America or anywhere else. And the person who passed, uh, it was like our equivalent of a, a member's uh, bill, and the person that passed that, and I think we should all be grateful given the huge increase in the volume of whisky exports and whisky consumption, was the Tories' own Bill Walker. So there we are. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I now call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. Can I join uh, with others in congratulating uh, Kevin Stewart on his motion and securing uh, this debate? And no disrespect to Mr Stewart or indeed uh, our internationally renowned whisky industry, but at the moment, uh, following momentous events in Orkney last Saturday, for me, the 16th of May stands out as the day that Sandy finally defeated reigning champions St Ola in the Orkney Parish Cup. Uh, achieving this victory, like any good single malt, has taken its time, uh, but it was well worth the wait. I'm reliably informed that hardier members of the Sandy team than I uh, did indeed mark the happy coincidence of uh, our victory with World Whiskey Day uh, with the odd dram or two. But I'm delighted to be able to uh, take part and make a brief contribution to this uh, debate, um, which, as Sarah Boyack says, is very timely, very welcome. Uh, I, as I think everybody has acknowledged, this is a genuinely world-class industry with a global reach uh, almost unsurpassed by any sector in the Scottish or indeed the UK economies. The, the numbers, I think as Sarah Boyack uh, indicated, are absolutely staggering. I think £5 billion of contribution to the UK economy overall, uh, £4.3 billion in net exports, and uh, jobs either directly or indirectly supported that uh, go well over uh, 40,000. And I see in my own constituency, again, as others have reflected, I see that impact uh, at a very local level. Uh, perhaps Highland Park um, is the, the more familiar uh, distillery, and certainly demand both domestically and internationally for Highland Park has grown significantly over uh, recent years. Um, but what has been particularly intriguing is seeing uh, the impact uh, within the wider tourism sector. There are those who are coming either solely or mainly uh, because of the presence of Highland Park um, and, the, uh, and the other distilleries, or actually seeing it as part of a very attractive tourism offering. And I think um, Edrington and Highland Park are to be commended on the investment they've put into the visitor centre and the support uh, for that tourism uh, traffic. But I certainly wouldn't want to overlook the contribution that SCAPA make as well. It's a very different distillery, much smaller craft artisanal uh, whisky. I had the privilege of having a tour of the distillery a few years back, and I'm delighted that uh, with the support of Chivas, um, Scapa Distillery is now opening its door to the wider public after, uh, I think, around 130 years. Uh, commenting on, on this um, other most momentous event uh, in the Orkney calendar, Brian McCauley, uh, distilling manager at Scapa, said, I have personally taken pleasure in removing the no visitors sign. Uh, and I know I speak on behalf of the team here in saying that we can't wait to see the Scapa distillery form an interesting, educative and welcoming part 
of the Orkney community. And I think that illustrates how both Hallam Park and Scapa are clearly and see themselves very much as a key component of the overall tourism offering in Orkney, as well as an integral part of the high quality world class food and drink sector. Uh, and therefore, I mean, Orkney, in many respects, is simply a microcosm of what's happening more generally within Scotland. Uh, as well as acknowledging the individual companies within the sector, I think um, special mention is also due to the Scotch Whisky Association for the work they do, uh, promoting the industry, I think, exceptionally well, both at home and abroad, taking up a wide range of interests on their behalf. And I think Mary Scanlon and David Torrance were white, right to draw attention to the environmental record uh, of the, the sector. And David Torrance right too, I think, in highlighting the responsible drink message that's reinforced time and again, and I would need to say that as the honorary patron of the Orkney Alcohol Counselling and Advice uh, Service. Um, the, uh, the, the promotional work, though, is not just done by the SWA. Um, I would also wish to acknowledge the commitment on a voluntary basis of some of the global Scots uh, around the world, such as Eric Huang, the chair of the Scotch Malt Whisky Society in Taiwan, whom I met uh, at the end of last year. Um, I think we can uh, take some personal credit for the remarkable growth we've seen uh, in whisky exports to that particular market. So um, I think it's absolutely right that we have uh, this debate. I think we look forward with a degree of optimism. And again, I congratulate Kevin Stewart and Blair Bowman. Uh, I wish Highland Park, Scapa and all those working in and alongside the sector very well in the years ahead. Thank you. Many thanks. And last in the open debate, although I'm sure not least, Stuart Stevenson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. I'll try not to let you down. Um, I'm pleased in particular that World Whiskey uh, Day is now anchored in the calendar for years ahead as the third Saturday uh, in uh, May. Now, for Sarah Boyack, that will be a huge disappointment because it will not be on her birthday until 2020. Uh, the rest of us, however, will celebrate it every year uh, when it is on, uh, first of all, next year, the 21st of May, then the 20th, and so on and so forth. And, of course, that will come uh, just two Saturdays after the next Scottish parliamentary election. So there will be those of us who will be celebrating a release from this place. There will be those of us who are celebrating a reappointment to this place. And there may be those of us who are celebrating their departure with less than a glad spirit. But we'll all have an excuse to taste one of Scotland's uh, finest uh, materials. Now, Mary Scanlon talked about Bill Walker's uh, Act of Parliament, trivial by comparison with the 1915 Immature Spirits Act that my father's cousin James Stevenson took through uh, the Westminster Parliament, which, of course, is what is responsible for why whisky is not permitted to be sold under three years old, which of course created the quality uh, that we depend on our industry today. Let me, like others, congratulate Kevin Stewart on uh, securing this debate. Uh, it's timely, it's appropriate, it's interesting, and I will go away having learned something. Um, Mary Scanlon spoke about Isle and the distilleries there. Uh, I'm a private pilot, and I'll just tell you one of the things about flying to Isle is that all the distilleries have the name of the distillery painted in huge letters on the roof of the distilleries. And air traffic control at the airport at Isle navigate you to the airport by reference to the names of the distilleries on the basis you can look out the window and see that you're at the right one. So it's of help to many people who have to be stone cold sober in what they do. Now, Kevin Stewart talked about Antarctica, but he didn't tell you the whole story. There were actually two events on Antarctica itself, one at uh, Davis Station. Uh, like the other one, it's one of the few places in the world without a postcode. And uh, on the 16th of May, between 7 o'clock and 10 o'clock, the expedition team celebrated World Whiskey Day by hosting a whiskey appreciation evening, sampling a variety of whiskies from the personal collections of the wintering ex expedition team. And at Mawson Station, um, between uh, 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock, they had a whisky tasting uh, between each course of their dinner that evening. So across the world, uh, people have been celebrating. In Kenya, in Nairobi, they had a celebration. In Cambodia, in the warehouse, in the old market area. And in Kiev, 
troubled as uh, the Ukraine currently is, they were able to make time uh, in Sovetskaya Street uh, for uh, whisky tasting. And in my niece's hometown of Townsville in Queensland, um, they had a whisky menu from which one could select a wide range of, uh, of, of, of whiskies in the traditional gentleman's uh, bar. And of course, here in this city, and I'm surprised uh, that uh, it was not earlier mentioned, the Coach House uh, New Liston uh, had, uh, under the aegis of the Edinburgh School of Food and Wine, a gourmet cookery school for men. That particularly attracted my attention, uh, where uh, that one-day cookery course uh, was followed by a tutored whisky tasting. Uh, so I'm sure that would be an excellent event, but I particularly favoured a Glasgow event called the Spirit of Independence Tasting. Um, now, to be fair, it was not a political reference. It was about the independent distilleries who were not owned uh, by the big boys, but they seem to have had uh, a terrific time if the adverts are anything to go by. I'm jealous of Mary Scanlon, even more jealous of my colleague uh, to the west of me, uh, Richard Lockhead, who's going to respond to the debate, but I certainly celebrated World Whiskey Day on Saturday uh, with a refreshing draught of a knock from the distillery at Knock. Uh, I welcomed the constituency boundary changes in 2011, gave me that distillery to add to the couple I already had, but I'm looking forward to making a takeover bid for Murray at the next election, because I just want more of them. You can't get enough. Presiding mm -hmm. Officer. Many thanks. And I now invite uh, Richard Lockhead to respond to the debate. Cabinet Secretary, seven minutes or so, please. Thank you. And can I just say at the outset, as the self-styled Minister for Whiskey in the Scottish Government, it gives me great delight to open this debate and firstly congratulate Kevin Stewart on sponsoring this debate. Uh, it's very appropriate, of course, uh, given that Kevin Stewart is not only a champion of the Scottish whisky sector, but also represents Aberdeen, where World Whisky Day was founded. And I've list listened closely to many of the contributions, and I'll do my best to respond to some of the themes raised in the debate. I should say at the outset, I took note of Mary Scanlon speaking about pouring a bottle of whisky over the haggis. I once was asked to pour a bottle of Glenfarclas into the River Spey to open the fishing season, which was both a privilege but quite painful at the same time because it was a good quality bottle of Glenfarclas whisky. And I know that given the number of times we are all asked to donate Scotch whisky to raffles and auctions that we've all personally invested in the future of this magnificent sector in Scotland. Mary Scanlon. Sorry, I do feel I have to correct for the record. Uh, I, I poured a little glass of whisky over the haggis, not a bottle. Uh, I think that's quite important for the credibility that I do have. Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> well, I'm sure it was still a very fine tasting haggis with uh, that added benefit of the Scotch whisky over it. It's quite uh, amazing how we are here discussing in Parliament World Whisky Day, given that it's only back in 2012 that Blair Bowman uh, first founded the concept of World Whiskey Day, and it just shows how uh, the day, the celebration of Scotch whisky has gone from strength to strength, the intervening time, here we are now in 2015, is actually having a parliamentary debate on World Whiskey Day. Uh, it is amazing how Scotch whisky is important, not only as a product, but how this, what's a very simple drink of only three key ingredients, the barley, the water, and the yeast, can have such a profound impact on many lives in this country and the economy of the country as well at the same time. But not only that, as we've been hearing today, it's enjoyed by literally millions of people around the whole of the planet. Now, the fourth ingredient, the fourth magical ingredient, of course, of Scotch whisky is the people, because much of its creation is a result of the passion, the craftsmanship and devotion of our citizens who work in the Scotch whisky industry. It's very important to recognise the role many people have played over the last couple of centuries in building up this enormous uh, asset uh, in Scotland and which is now being celebrated uh, around the world uh, last Saturday in World Whisky Day. As Kevin Stewart said, there were, for the first time ever, events taking place in every continent. Now, the industry, as many members have said, does support many jobs in this country. There are some 40,000 jobs directly and indirectly supported across uh, these islands, with every job in the Scotch whisky industry supporting, I'm told, just under three jobs, further jobs in the broader uh, economy. 
It's also an industry that's going from strength to strength. I think we've all been fascinated over the last few years alone how many new distilleries have opened in Scotland, how many more are on the drawing board or under construction, and how many more are planned for the future as well. Uh, it's an amazing booming sector. Exports alone have increased by over 50% since 2007. I had the benefit of just in the last few weeks visiting Kings Barn Distillery, a new distillery uh, in Fife, and also Ballon Dallas Single Estate Distillery, which was officially opened just a couple of weeks ago uh, in Speyside uh, in my own constituency. We also know there are many more that have been opened just in the last uh, couple of years in Scotland and many more that are about to officially open. And some of those, of course, have been supported by the food grant scheme that the Scottish Government runs, the new version of which is worth £70 million, which I only just launched uh, this week. And no doubt there'll be a flurry of applications for new whisky distilleries across the, the country wanting to apply to that. So that's a sign of the root health in which the, the industry finds itself. I should also say there's other spectacular projects planned in the pipeline. Again, in Speyside, the spectacular new Macallan distillery that's now uh, begun to be built uh, is going to be world beating and of course it's going to be a massive visitor attraction once it's complete and a very iconic distillery indeed. That does remind us of course of the tourism value of Scotch whisky. Many of the most popular visitor attractions in this country are in the whisky industry uh, and of course you've got uh, various locations here in the Royal Mile as well as around the rural communities. So again as members said the employment value of this industry is significant particularly in our more rural uh, communities. We should also bear in mind that this also underpins primary production in this country as well, particularly in the agricultural sector, with the barley grown by our farmers, which of course is a key ingredient of Scotch whisky, and we're looking at how to improve the excellence of barley growing in this country through research and development for the future to make sure the whisky quality product can go from strength to strength in the future. I also have the benefit of this week on Thursday of visiting the Scotch Whisky Research Institute. So I'm looking forward to meeting the people there to again learn how there's, under, there's work always ongoing to improve the excellence of Scotch whisky. Uh, Scotch whisky also depends on Scotland's pristine environment and to the, the success of that sector reminds us how we have to look after the environment in this country and ensure the good quality water we have and the natural environment is always there to enjoy to underpin many of our key economic sectors. So there's a magnificent story told by the success of Scotch whisky in this country and World Whisky Day is all about telling that story. Again, as we've heard, World Whisky Day falls in the middle of Whisky Month, which of course is part of this, the Year of Food and Drink 2015. Kevin Stewart. In, in terms of uh, telling the story, uh, we've seen that 11 million plus hits uh, on uh, Twitter. Uh, can we uh, ensure that we use social media to the utmost and World Whiskey Day and every day of the year to promote that product, to promote Scotland and to ensure uh, that we continue to have a vibrant economy based on the back of that quality product? Cabinet Secretary. Well, it's true that social media is a fantastic opportunity for promoting Scotch whisky, and I think Kevin Stewart makes a good point, so we should certainly continue to investigate how we can make the most of that. And perhaps if we do have new ideas that can be used this year, the year of food and drink, we can certainly support taking them forward. Other ways in which we've helped promote Scotch whisky, of course, is through the many different events sponsored by Events Scotland and supported by Visit Scotland in the country as part of the year of food and drink. We've seen the Spirit of Speyside Whiskey Festival supported, which in turn sponsored a further 400 events across Speyside. We've got the Moor Festival at Black Balquidder, which takes place this weekend, a family event, again with local produce and Scotch whiskey being celebrated at it. We've got the Isla Festival of Music and Malt, which is a nine-day festival, now in its 31st year. And again, that is, of course, sponsoring many, many different events across that spectacular island as well. We've also got Create, Eat, Whiskey, which marries food and whiskey, uh, and that's described as a multi-sensory whiskey adventure, which has also been sponsored. And some of these events are taking place this month, Whiskey Month, and others throughout the year. Uh, and of course, we've got many, many events here in the Royal Mail taking place uh, as well. So a lot of these events, of course, have been celebrating the long-standing success of Scotch whiskey in this country. Many events are taking advantage of the publicity that's generated by World Whiskey Day. And that's why we cannot do enough to praise both Blair Bowman, who founded World Whiskey Day, and those who are now taking it forward. 
and even Blair's having his own event, I'm told, in Aberdeen called Blair Bowman Whiskey Dinner and Drams, which is taking place at Tipping House on the 27th of May. So there's a plug for his event as well. So I hope that's a great success. I hope Blair Bowman's very proud of the progress that Scotch uh, World Whiskey Day, World Whiskey Day has, has made uh, since 2012. Uh, he's still involved, uh, as Kevin Stewart says, that the brand is now taken over by Hot Rum and Cow Publishing, uh, but they are continuing to work together on that. So hopefully we'll have many more debates in this chamber to celebrate the success of Scotch whisky and the economic value of that, the cultural value of that as well, and the fun and, and enjoyment it brings to our lives here in Scotland and, of course, the people around the world. So once again, I congratulate all the speakers on their contributions and Kevin Stewart on bringing forward this debate. Uh, I wish everyone a belatedly World Whisky Day, but I did that on Twitter uh, on Saturday. In the meantime, I think it's now time to retire to the bar and allow Kevin Stewart to buy us all a dram to celebrate his motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes Kevin Stewart's debate on World Whisky Day 2015, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.